One in a hundred people suffer from celiac disease. And if you're watching this video, you're probably wondering if you have celiac disease yourself or you've just been diagnosed. And in that case, this is the video for you. We will also be going through some unusual symptoms of celiac that many people do not know is related to the disease. Now, before we go into this video that I've prepared for you, I'd just like to remind you to hit the like button if you do enjoy this content and don't forget to subscribe. I'd love to have you as a viewer. So what is the basis of celiac disease. Well, celiac disease is a reaction that the body shows towards gluten. This is a protein that is found in wheat, barley, and rye, and also some oats. So it can be found in things like bread and cakes and pasta, ready meals and beer. Once it's digested, for unknown reasons, the body starts to produce antibodies and these antibodies cause a cascade of events that lead to inflammation within your small bowel. Now, within our small bowel, we have finger-like projections called villi. These sort of move around like this within the small bowel and what it does, it increases the surface area of the bowel allowing it to absorb a lot more nutrients than it would be able to if it was flat. In celiac disease, what happens is that these finger-like projections are flattened. Patients' ability to absorb these nutrients is reduced, and these can lead to deficiencies and malnutrition. So what happens if a patient with celiac disease eats something that contains gluten? Well, the most common symptoms are things such as bloating, tummy aches, diarrhea, but they can also experience constipation and indigestion. There are also some generalized symptoms that can be related to celiac disease as well, such as tiredness, unintentional weight loss, and anemia. But as a clinician, it really surprises me about the next few symptoms and conditions that are actually related to celiac. Number one on our list is infertility or difficulty falling pregnant. And a celiac screen often forms part of the screen that we do on patients when we refer them to fertility services. Patients may also experience numbness in their hands and feet, which we also refer to as peripheral neuropathy. They can also have itchy skin, but a specific skin condition that is related to celiac disease, dermatitis herpetiformis. This is a skin condition that presents in around one in 3,000 patients that have celiac. And what it is, is it's essentially a rash that's associated with celiac disease. And it's sort of red and bumpy, can burn and sting. And it's often found in places like the elbows, the shoulders, the buttocks and the knees. And following a gluten-free diet usually treats the skin condition. However, when it's not improving with this gluten-free diet, then they can try a medication called Dapsone. Celiac can sometimes be the cause of delayed puberty. This is where a child does not go through the expected pubertal changes around a certain age. Celiac disease can also affect your spleen. Now, the spleen is an organ that not many patients are familiar with. They know that it's there, they see it in movies being removed sometimes. Not a lot of people understand what it actually does. The spleen is an organ which is sort of like a large lymph node that stores blood cells, so red blood cells and white blood cells. And within the immune system, what it does is once antibodies stick to bacteria and they're traveling through the body, the spleen sort of captures them and destroys them. So it plays quite a large part in our immune system. So in celiac disease, if the function of your spleen has been affected, they can be predisposed to many different types of infections. So as you can see, celiac disease is a much more than a stomach upset when we ingest gluten. As I've described, those finger-like projections that help us absorb as much nutrients as we can from the food that we eat are affected. So it leads to deficiencies in things like iron, vitamin D, B12, folate, selenium, calcium, and many more. And it can also lead to malnutrition because our body is unable to absorb all the nutrients that we want to. 
so it can lead to weight loss and muscle wasting. In rare cases, if the celiac is not addressed for a very long time, this chronic inflammation within the small bowel can sometimes lead to some cancers. It can also lead to some ulcers and the forming of strictures, which is narrowing of the bowel. So let's say you or your doctor is concerned that you might have celiac. Then they will go ahead and do some tests. Now we're quite lucky that testing for celiac is pretty straightforward. We will send you away for some blood tests to check for these antibodies associated with celiac disease. If these antibodies come back as positive, then we refer you to a specialist doctor who deals with the gut called a gastroenterologist. In some cases, if the blood tests are negative, but there is still a high suspicion that the patient is suffering from celiac disease, they will also be referred to a gastroenterologist. Now, what does the gastroenterologist do? Well, they do a endoscopy, which is where they put a camera down your throat into your stomach to get some samples from your small bowel to send away to the lab to confirm that you have celiac disease. One thing to note though, for the blood tests and the endoscopy to show that you have celiac disease, you actually need to be having a gluten diet for at least six weeks before your test and at least one of your meals a day. The reason being is that if you're on a gluten-free diet then the bowel starts to heal and it starts to go back to looking like what it used to with those finger-like projections. Then do the blood tests and the endoscopy. They might not pick up the pathology that we're looking for in celiac disease. So let's go on to treatment. Celiac disease does not have a cure, meaning that we can't give the patient a tablet and that condition is healed and it goes away, but we can manage it. And the way we do that is to advise the patient to go on a strict gluten-free diet. What this does, it allows the bowels to heal. And this usually takes a few weeks, but can take up to six months, very rarely a few years if the damage was extensive. As we've mentioned, there's a lot of deficiencies that are involved as part of celiac disease. So it's really important to work together with a dietitian to ensure that you are getting the correct nutrients you need to as part of your gluten-free diet. We have also mentioned that celiac can affect your spleen and the spleen plays a vital part of your immune system. As a result of this, the patient is at increased risk of certain infections. So what we need to do is we need to vaccinate the patient to increase their immunity against particular pathogens. Celiac patients are eligible for pneumococcal vaccines, meningitis C vaccines, Hib vaccine, and a yearly flu vaccine. Now in some rare cases, celiac disease doesn't respond well to a gluten-free diet. So the patient has ongoing symptoms despite sticking to a strict gluten-free diet. This is what we refer to as refractory celiac disease. And the reasons for this is largely unclear, but what will happen is that you'll be referred back to the gastroenterologist so they can do some more tests to make sure that your symptoms are not coming from a different condition. And once that's been ruled out, the patients can be trialed on a course of steroids to really dampen that inflammation. So that is your whistle stop tour on celiac disease. We have gone through what celiac disease is, the symptoms, how we diagnose it and the treatments. And we've also gone through some unusual presentations of celiac disease, which I think is really important to educate our patients with. If you've learned something from this video, then all you need to do is hit the like button so that I know that you gain something from this content because I take a lot of pride in the videos that I make. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe also, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.